The Analyst is The Matrix Resurrection's most fascinating edition. Welcome back to the channel, I'm your host The Viking, and today we will be breaking down and explaining the intentions of The Analyst from the Ford Matrix film played by Neil Patrick Harris. I think Neil Patrick Harris did a fantastic job as the analyst in The Matrix Resurrections, being the analyst and therapist for Neo, trapping him in this new Matrix to feed off his energy. And I think that Neil Patrick Harris had an amazing screen presence as well. Every time he was on screen, he stole that scene. He really did. And you find out later in the movie what his intentions were with Neo, with Trinity, and this new simulation, which was absolutely fascinating. He wasn't a villain that could fight toe-to-toe -to -toe with Neo like Agent Smith did in the original trilogy. And then again, the architect, the original kind of analyst of the Matrix, he was very stubborn, he was very cold, he didn't show any emotion whatsoever. He didn't really like humanity. But Neil Patrick Harris's character, the analyst, he loved studying humans and maybe that's why he was a therapist because as a therapist you can really get into people's feelings their thoughts what makes them drive what makes them sad what makes them angry their happiest moments as a therapist and he uses this platform to understand neo to understand humanity what they want what they crave that's why he builds social media and everyone's stuck on their phones when you see neo in the elevator Neo is depressed at this world he is in. Even he is up late at night on his phone attached to it. But there's an interesting article from Polygon.com that talks about Neil Patrick Harris's portrayal as the analyst, what his plan was, and it's explained as well. So, this of course will have spoilers for The Matrix Resurrections. And don't forget to subscribe guys, give a thumbs up to the channel if you like the content. Check out my Matrix Resurrections review, my Matrix Resurrections explained video, and also... Matrix 5 could be in the works from Warner Brothers, but Lana Wachowski may not want to return. And also, if you can check out yesterday's video where I talk about The Matrix Resurrections, is actually about trauma. Okay, even after four Matrix movies and a number of spin-off stories, viewers still don't know too much about the machines, the artificially intelligent antagonists of the series. Most of our peeks into the inner workings of the AI society comes from what we learn via the programs which inhabit and assert some measure of control over the Matrix. As far as what fans of the original trilogy know, two of the oldest programs that exist are the Oracle, an intuitive program who helped to create the version of the Matrix seen throughout the films, and the Architect, the program originally created and tasked by the machines to create the Matrix itself, the Analyst. The antagonist of Matrix Resurrections, portrayed by Neil Patrick Harris, introduces a new wrinkle into the evolving power dynamics behind the creation of the Matrix and its continued hold over human and machine kind. The Architect was a program originally created by the machines to create a functioning version of the Matrix. Unable to do so, the Architect was assisted by the Oracle, a program who helped develop a version of the Matrix that would keep humanity sedated at the cost of a recurring human anomaly known as the One, and a fraction of the human population who would learn of the system's true nature, escape, and subsequently rebel against it. At the end of the Matrix Revolutions, Neo brokers a truce between the machines and the humans in exchange for the feeding agent Smith, a mutual existential threat that threatened the integrity of the Matrix, and with it, the survival of both humanity and the machines. After defeating Smith, Neo's body is carried away into the machine city. The Matrix Resurrections takes place 60 years after the events of the Matrix Revolutions, with Neo now living out his life as a video game programmer named Thomas Anderson while experiencing strange, uncanny visions of his life during the Matrix trilogy. Turns out that the program known as the Analyst was present when Neo sacrificed his own life to defeat Smith and was instrumental 
in both Neo and Trinity's resurrection. After the events of the third film, the machines consented to the terms of Neo's truce, allowing any human who wished to leave the Matrix to do so. This decision led to a decrease of the energy siphoned by the machines' power plants, creating an energy shortage which subsequently threatened the survival of the machines. This desperation for power resulted in the eruption of a civil war among the machines as various factions of the machine world that disagreed on whether to continue uploading the truce battle for supremacy and survival. In the aftermath, several of the oldest programs of the Matrix, including the Oracle, the Architect and the Exile programs were purged from the system, while the analyst seized upon the opportunity to propose a new version of the Matrix which would not only compel human beings to remain within the system, but would be built around siphoning energy from Neo and Trinity. When Neo's corpse was taken away, the analyst set about attempting to rebuild both his and Trinity's bodies in order to access the source code of the One. After reconstructing them, he discovered that Neo and Trinity exerted vast amounts of energy whenever they were in close proximity together. Delighted at this discovery, the analyst constructed a power plant specifically to contain them, Neo and Trinity, that was separate from those of the ones used to contain the rest of humanity, placing them in adjacent pods so as to safely siphon their energy without risking an overload. On top of all that, the analyst created a new version of the Matrix, one which preyed on the emotions of humans connected to it to ensnare them in the state of dependency. Though not explicitly stated, it's strongly implied that social media platforms exist in this incarnation of the Matrix and serve a vital role in keeping the human population sedated and reluctant to leave the Matrix. With the success of these new developments, the analyst effectively became the new architect of the Matrix, keeping a close eye on Neo so as to keep him producing energy while attempting attempting to unravel why the anomaly of the One continues to occur, presumably to find a way to generate yet even more power. At the end of the Matrix Resurrections, having lost both Neo and Trinity, the Analyst nevertheless insists that he has won because he is confident that he has created a version of the Matrix that humanity will never voluntarily leave from. In defiance, Neo and Trinity tell the analyst that they're going to change his world together and remind humanity what it means to be free again. If we ever get a sequel, we may see the analyst have to report back to his bosses and get an even more revealing peek into the machine world. So if that whole plot in the Matrix of Directions was confusing to you, you didn't quite understand it, I hope that this video breaks it down for you in a simple form. That you can understand that the analyst was there when Neo died, he rebuilt his body, he rebuilt Trinity's body, he used their power to power this new Matrix to keep the humans inside it, to brainwash them with social media, with Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, things like that that we see in today's society. And he made the perfect Matrix, but at the expense of Trinity and Neo. And torturing them, experimenting on them for 60 years. And drugging Neo as well in this kind of time loop he was in. Prescribing him blue pills. The Analyst for me is a very fascinating villain. He literally is playing 3D chess. And that's kind of on the nose because of the Matrix and computers and numbers. But he does it beautifully. For 60 years, the real world could not find Neo. They didn't know where he was because his body was never retrieved. In the Matrix game, which follows Morpheus, he was very annoyed that the machines never gave Neo's body back to them so they could do a proper burial. He never got Neo's body, and now we see why. The analyst took the body, and he was able to produce power from it. So... A lot of people online are like, the film had no villain. Look, the action, I will agree, is maybe average. But when you look at the original trilogy, the action, that was groundbreaking. It's hard to groundbreak again, considering all the action movies that we get. For me, this is more of a character study. It was more of kind of a mind taught provoking movie. Maybe even more than the original, because there's so many layers to this movie, big time. Yesterday's video was about trauma, today's video was about the analyst and his plan and his intentions and the difference between him and the architect. The architect was basically removed from his position, the analyst came in because he said, I've got a bigger idea, I've got a better idea that can produce power, that can save all of us, save all the machines. And he did it and he created the best matrix. And the way that he studies people, the way that he understands what humanity wants is by being this therapist, this analyst who studies people day to day. And he figured out, well, Facebook, Instagram, these types of things 
will brainwash people and they'll never want to leave. And he questions Neo and Trina at the end. You may have physically beat me, you may have won this movie per se, but will people end up leaving? Will people, when you show them the truth, will they want to leave my Matrix? I doubt it. Because in today's world, guys, who are you without Facebook or Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter? You know, you see the younger generation of people, teenagers becoming adults, they live off Instagram, they live off the likes, they get the attention, you look at OnlyFans, you have attractive people, well just people in general, they go on those types of accounts, they make money because of it. If you take everything away from people, who are they as a person? What do they have left? Are they real? Who are they? What makes them happy? Are they sad? I thought this was a pretty good explanation of the movie. So if you go back and you watch it now and you are aware of what the analyst is doing, I wonder will it improve the movie for you or maybe you got it on your first viewing. But also I've seen some comments to this article and one of them was, when it's written out like that, the story seems solid, even intriguing. But the way it was executed simply did not sell the foundation it was on. That's the problem nowadays, isn't it? We want the movie to explain every single detail. We don't want to dig deeper at all. We don't want to re-watch a movie again and again to understand it. It needs to tell us everything now or it's not a good movie. Another comment was, I agree. Both Wachowski sisters always have some great ideas, but their execution isn't always the best. Still, I thought the movie was fine. As far as unnecessary sequels go, this wasn't bad at all. So... I just I just think this film puts a mirror up to the big franchises like Terminator, like Spider-Man, like Ghostbusters. When those movies run on nostalgia and then you get The Matrix Resurrections, which is just completely different to it. It doesn't offer you what made the first or second or third one great. It actually takes those away. It simplifies them into something a little bit more subtle. I enjoy a movie that has a deeper plot to it, that has new things every time you watch it. I think The Matrix Resurrections is definitely that type of movie. Now, some people like this, some people hated it. That's okay. I understand that. People like movies that are on the surface. Action-packed, fun movies. Wow, that was a great time. Other people like, well, I didn't quite like that movie, but I'll watch it again. I'll pick up new things. And there's people who absolutely loved it the first time of viewing. But there's so much potential for a Matrix there really is I would love to see more of the civil war between the machines how the analyst was able to you know take over and maybe you know put the architect to the side because we got to find out that there was a massive purge in the matrix when making the new one the mother and the father of the original matrix trilogy the architect and oracle were purged they're gone you also have the Merovingian who has survived so many purges of the Matrix, new Matrix every single time, but he's always stayed around, and you have the Exiles as well, and the Merovingian this time around, which I'll do a video on, you know, does not like it, Neo upset the balance, and that's why he kind of has a rant towards Neo in the movie, which was quite funny, which I'll I'll do a, a special video about that as well, but I do wonder, did the architect survive somewhere, the suits, the machines, do they keep him kind of in prison, or in Matrix jail, or whatever, will we see him again, the architect, but in a new form. The Oracle as well. Like, is she still around, but in somebody else's body, of course, because the actress is still, you know, older actors and stuff like that. We got to see new versions of Morpheus and new versions of Agent Smith in this one as well. I'm sure we'll see no, new versions of them. But it's very interesting. There's so much to explore there on the machine side of the thing. And then uh, that line from Neo and Trinity, we're here to remake your world, rebuild your world. How will they convince humanity? How will they build a new Matrix? If they do make another movie, what will they actually have in that movie? But I would love them to explore that big time. Neil Patrick Harris, as the analyst, must have something else up his sleeve to go against Neo and Trinity. And he will be the big baddie going in to the fifth movie. But will he make somebody like Agent Smith that can rebel against Neo and Trinity and fight against them? And how will Agent Smith play into number five also because at the end of the movie kind of his truce with kind of neo he doesn't say i'm going to come and get you but i think there's more to agent smith as well because his end goal is to be free and maybe to wipe out humanity as well wipe out everything he just wants to get rid of it all so there's so much to it especially going into a fifth movie will the fifth movie get made or not i'm not too sure warner brothers wanted but the producers and the writers didn't plan on making a fifth movie so we'll have to see how that develops and i'll do many videos on that as well because we've got so much information But guys, what's your thoughts on Neil Patrick Harris as the analyst? He's a lot more 
vocal is a lot more expressive than the architect was because the architect basically hated humans but he had the purpose of creating that matrix he had the humans there for that while neil patrick harris is the analyst kind of not loves humans, but he's intrigued by them. What makes them tick? That's why he's an actual therapist in the movie. And I found that very, very interesting how he's also keeping Neo captured, but he's studying him as well. I found that really, really fascinating. And where do you think that The Matrix 5 could go? What kind of story beats would they implement? What would you like to see? Would you like to see more of the machine war? The analyst now having to go back to the drawing board per se. What kind of plan will he have? Let me know below, guys. Really interested to hear your thoughts. If you enjoy deep diving into the world of the Matrix, then this channel is for you. Make sure you subscribe because we've got brand new Matrix videos coming every single day. Breaking down the old trilogy, breaking down resurrections, character studies, theories, and explaining how all of these movies tie together and what we could see in Matrix 5. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And welcome to the desert of the real.